hey, viewers, new features from Terraform means extra goodness for Azure. So join me and April as she shows us some new Terraform features next time on the DevOps Lab. Welcome to the DevOps Lab. Today, we have a great show. We've got April Edwards with us, and she's going to show us some really awesome new Terraform goodness. Hey, April, how's it going? Great, Abel. How are you doing? Thank you for having me back. Absolutely. So for those that don't know you, what do you do at Microsoft? I'm a senior software engineer in the commercial software engineering department here at Microsoft. Very, very cool. So you pinged me the other day and said Terraform has some new stuff that you really wanted to show, right? Yes, so they've released the uh, Azure Provider 2.0 very, very recently. And there's some great features that have been released that I want to show you that we can get out there and also share with our audience. All right, let's just jump in and start showing me cool stuff. All right, Abel, so first up, we have the Provider Upgrade that has been listed. So if we look at my screen here, we can see that at the top of my code in my main.tf file, I've listed the provider version 2.0. Um, so this is one of the biggest changes. You can add this into your existing code um, and, and upgrade it or you know start some new Terraform files and put it in there. Next up, one of the other features we have is we have custom timeouts. Now, when you're deploying things in Azure, a lot of times you have dependencies. Maybe you're deploying resource groups or virtual machines or maybe NSGs or ASGs, so application security groups, and they have to be uh, de they have to be destroyed and created in certain orders. So putting that timeout in allows you to do that. And it also helps preventing errors when you're deleting things. So if we look at my code here, I've actually put in a timeout uh, for my code. So before the default was about 60 minutes and you couldn't change that. So in my code here, in the creation, I've given it, I need a 10 minute, del uh, 10 minute delay. And then in the deletion, I've put in a 30 minute timeout. So that saves a lot of headache when you're deleting all your resources in Azure with Terraform. Nice. So the next uh, update we have is the import feature. So if you look down at my code here, I actually tried to apply my code and deploy my resource group. And if you look down the bottom here, it says that actually there's already a resource group existing in my subscription. So how do we overcome that? So if I go to my subscription in the portal, we can see that actually I already do have this, this resource group. So Terraform needs to be able to manage that. So to do that, we have this new feature called the import feature. And this is really, really great in 2.0 and they've really refined it so that you can take existing resources in Azure and bring them into your code. Now, the one downside is it doesn't create a configuration file, but it allows the state file to in fact manage it. So how do we do that? So I've gone into my resource. Uh, Terraform requires the resource ID. So I can get that from the portal itself. I can get my resource ID property right here and go back into my code. I'm going to go ahead and put in Terraform import here, along with the variable name and the uh, resource ID from the Azure portal. Now, again, we can use Azure CLI or Cloud Shell to achieve this. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. It's going to run Terraform import. So what it's going to do, it's going to call that state file and it's going to bring that resource into my state file. Now, again, this doesn't give us configuration uh, file output, but that apparently is coming in the future. So we're really looking forward to that because that will help a lot of us that have built resources in Azure and need to get that managed by Terraform. So great, it has successfully ran our import. So I'm gonna go into the import file here. Um, I don't have anything in it in the minute, but when we do run an import, we need to put our resources in there. So I'm gonna actually remove my resource from my main file, put it into my import file here, and I'm gonna call it. Um, now, the other thing I want to do is because I'm calling in and importing this resource, I want to add resources to my main file. I want to be able to deploy other things to it. And since we've deployed a resource group, I want to actually be able to deploy a virtual network to this resource group. Um, now, we can build things further, um, such as, you know, maybe uh, virtual machines and everything else and add that into that resource group we already have. But for now, I just want to go ahead and run what we have. So I've added in the virtual network uh, here in the screen. I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask Terraform to apply this, and I'm going to tell it to auto approve as well to save the hassle of me having to type yes. Great. So now that we've shown that we've created these resources and used that import import feature, uh, a lot of people find this useful for their existing Azure resources. And there's one more thing I want to show you, Abel. Okay. 
So another change that HashiCorp has made to with the new Azure RM 2.0 provider is that they've separated out uh, virtual machine types and virtual mach machine scale sets. Um, so when you go and create a virtual machine, maybe like a Linux machine versus a Windows VM, there are differences, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even things like naming conventions. So to, to really bring in the long game and, and to give longevity to Terraform in the market, they've been able to separate out those resources. So here on the left, I'm, I've created a Windows uh, VM, pretty simple, just a simple basic virtual machine. I need to call the image. Um, and, and you would use that same template to basically call a Linux VM. Now here on the right, we're calling a Windows VM and we're using a different resource name. We're calling it the Azure Windows Virtual Machine. So if you want to call a Linux machine, you'll call the Azure Linux virtual machine, and the same will apply to scale sets. So they're enabling us as end users of Azure to bring in some of those extra features that we have enabled in Azure into your code, into your Terraform code. And it is a bit of a pain for people that have already deployed things in the old way. Um, it will unfortunately be deprecated. We don't know when, but HashiCorp is really making sure they're in it for the long game and supporting their product in Azure. Man, that was awesome. Terraform and Azure, they just work seamlessly together. And with the new Azure 2.0 provider, it seems like it's even easier than ever using Terraform as your infrastructure as code for Azure. So viewers, if you want more info, check out the links down below, and I'll see you all next time on the DevOps Lab.